Hey everyone. Well, <laughs> I need to go to the grocery store. I was uh, thinking that Lisa was gonna maybe go and I could just go with her, but um, turns out I need to go on my own. She's okay. She's been gone working for like, Um, like eight, ten days in a row, and then she was gone with her family on kind of like a mini vacation, vacay. And so, she doesn't really have time. So, I, she asked if I would go. I'm hoping this angle of the camera is gonna work. So here we go. Can I move this down? And, uh, yeah, I'm not feeling too, uh, too great, to be honest. I'm having some anxiety. I've been having anxiety all day about this. I've been having, ooh, as a big, huge, not joking, you guys, Monarch Butterfly is literally leading the path for me to go out of the fucking driveway. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> and it left and came back. It's just seeing all this as signs. Oh, this Oh my gosh, so much better. Holy shit. Kind of. So, here we go. Head southeast on Honokaya Waipio Road toward Kukuiha Ale Road. Cars. So, there's been a couple of different realizations. In 400 feet, turn right. Turn right. Continue on Hawaii 240 for eight miles. Sorry, I'm waiting for this lady to shit up for the guy. I mean, shit the bigot. Okay, so anyways, I've had a couple of different realizations lately. Um, one of them, which actually gave me more anxiety, was... I had this realization this little be nuts, that nothing, well, I know that nothing's outside of us, right? Like, we all know that. This is another awesomely not awesome fucking angle. Um, everything, nothing's outside of us is one, is one thing, yes. But I think the other thing I realized was... This is all me. This is all coming from me. And I started rereading the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyways. And it's such a... It's already going so slow. It's such a um, good book about, literally, like I said, just feeling the fear and doing it anyways and understanding that we don't have control over fucking anything like nothing absolutely nothing and why is it on ego Nuts. That fucking sound. Just 
direction for a minute. This is about the halfway mark. Maybe I'm supposed to go home and have a little bit of compassion for myself because any other time I would have really been really mad at myself and felt like I've gone backwards, but I did go two, three minutes, well, two minutes farther than I had before. help that like I have no food I mean I can eat food of Lisa's obviously but I still you know basically have no food of my own so there's like all this pressure I'm supposed to get food for Lisa and I need to get food for myself and there's just all this pressure and I'm shaking feel good. And I don't want to go. I don't want to. I don't like this pressure. I don't like the pressure of having to go. It like almost pisses me off. And I just feel like there's so much pressure on myself to just do this and do it right and not, not fucking, you know, like, I don't know, telling everybody that I'm past this and I'm over this. And like, technically, yeah, I am past 95% of it and this is the last part that's like really fucking hard and Make a U-turn. Turn right. I'm really, really trying to um, have compassion for myself. 
myself right now. I've already cried like three times today before I even left the fucking house. I did my relaxation technique. I did all Turn right. Things, but then, turn right. I don't think it's as, it's as simple as doing that right now because this is something bigger that I'm trying to work through and um, in 800 feet make a U-turn it's just not as simple it's just not I wish it was but it's fucking not Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Wow, holy shit. I will show you guys this fucking lookout though. Can I just switch this camera? Yeah, wow. It's pretty fucking epic. My PO lookout, huh? There's the freaking ocean. It's kind of awesome, kind of epic. People walking up from the fucking thing. That's kind of wild. Pretty cool. In 800 feet, turn right. Turn right. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. You can't do it. It's just the fucking, it's just, it's just the fucking, uh, it's just the, um, reality of, oh, fuck, I just turned down somewhere I don't think I can get out of, well, I can get out In of. In 400 feet, turn right. <sighs> turn right. Turn left, then turn left. Turn left. In 800 feet, make a U-turn. I don't know, maybe Scott will go with me, her husband. <laughs> oh, fuck.
on myself for it. So, Lisa was very um, understanding, of course, as she always is, because she's amazing. And um, I'm really trying to have some compassion for myself. There's so many things running through my brain right now. Like, am I not supposed to do a program to help people through this? Am I not actually over this? But I also need to stick to facts. And facts are, I have proven that I can get past this, that I've gotten past, I have gotten past 95% of this. I have. Lisa told me that we could just go tomorrow. She said she would go tomorrow and I can go, I'll just go with her. And I'm scared, I'm scared to be a passenger in a car at this point. Like I'm, I made it two minutes farther than I did before. So I'm seeing that as a win. And the facts are, is that it's not that I'm back at square one. It's that this part, this is the last part of it. And this, because it's the last part of it, it's the hardest and I'm going to choose to see it that way. I'm going to choose to see that it's a reminder of all the other times that I've had almost, or not ha not almost, but had like big breakthroughs. You know, everything feels super scary towards the end, like to the point where you doubt and you wonder if, if it's all for nothing and you want to spiral into that way of thinking. Like, I'm not going to let myself do that. And I'm not going to be mad at myself. I'm not. I know what that does. That does put me back at square one. And I have accomplished so much. So I'm just choosing to believe and remember the facts, which is this is the last part. So of course it's going to be hard. Because I just didn't think that it would, that it would be. I thought that it would be easier. I thought that it would be less challenging. <laughs> so there's one thing I've learned that I know is fact also is that things don't change unless you have a different perspective towards them and towards yourself in them. And old me would be spiraling into, oh great, I'm never gonna get past this. I'm always gonna have this. I'm always gonna be stuck with it. And new me is not gonna go there. I'm just not. So I'm gonna choose to have a different perspective and rely on the facts of what I know that happens after doing that. Which is that things shift and change and I'm not gonna give up on myself and I'm not gonna stop trying and Today was still a success because I did make it further. And I'm around people who hold space for me, which is something I'm so grateful for. people that are loving and understanding and say, oh, that's okay. And they like, genuinely mean it. It's such a reflection of the work I have done on myself towards like loving myself and accepting myself and being compassionate and keep going back to the night that I wasn't able to drive Lisa's car home. <laughs> Her car had been sitting at the airport for like over a week. And we ended up getting it from the airport and driving it 
up the street about 15 minutes to the Hilton where we were going to be spending all day for my birthday. And I was so exhausted afterwards that I couldn't drive her vehicle home. And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't think I can. And she was genuinely fucking okay with me just leaving her car there for another like two or three days, I think it was. And then I did make that drive by myself for an hour. I did, but she was in front of me in the car in front of me. And that's the difference. There's this piece that's missing. And it's the last part of this fucking journey. It is. It is. And that's why it's so hard. Because it's the end. It's the... It's facing those, the scariest of the scary fucking moments. It's reliving that. It is. So I'm going to choose to be nice to myself and have compassion for myself. <sighs> And know that I am going to make it through this. And know that the work I've been doing and the techniques I've been doing for myself and all of it, I'm going to continue to do it. And I'm going to make it through this. And then some. Maybe this is another reason why I haven't gotten to move to Maui yet. Because this is I am in a safe space to be doing this. I'm supported and loved and... Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Oh, well, I'm grateful for that. And because I've really been wondering, like, why am I still like why not why am I still here? But what why is my place not shown up yet in Maui? Like what's what's the hold up? Well, I'm the I'm you're always the hold up, right? <laughs> Whatever's not coming into your life is a reflection of of you. And I just feel like there's just so many things that are coming up. As I said before, it's it's coming from me, and that gave me panic this morning when I when I thought about that. It's all coming from me, and there's a part of me that it's like I look I look at the anxiety from two different perspectives. I see it as my inner child feeling like she's too much and too sensitive, and too big, and too loud, and too intense. That anxiety at his peak is my inner child. Too intense. So intense, maybe not too intense, but so intense that that's what's made everybody else walk away from her, including me. I don't wanna be around her. I don't want to be around myself. I'm trying to separate separate from myself I'm trying to do anything I can to not feel that so there's a part of me that's like went through a dialogue this morning where I was like I'm not gonna abandon you you can be too intense you're you're not too much you're not too sensitive you're not too loud you're not fill in blank right I'm gonna be here I'm not gonna abandon you I'm not gonna reject you you can feel however you want to you're totally safe to do that and then the other part of me is like, wants to yell and scream at it to get the fuck out of me. That it feels like an accumulation of darkness and pain and that was just in there for so long that it just bubbled up into this intense overflow of just chaos coming out of me. One of those things is not my own. <laughs> the other one is and if it comes from me then it's safe enough for me to feel and no matter how much I tell myself that when I'm out there um, that didn't seem to help me today and that's okay because I still feel like I'm getting shifts I still feel like I'm making progress even if it's not necessarily completely out there it's weird because when I was out there today, it's like I felt myself actually being somewhat okay, but I was now in the space where I was so afraid to like, if I go any further, I'm going to have that panic attack where I had it. And so I'm now I'm, I'm in there for some reason and I don't know what that's all about. So I'm going to have to like 
dissect. I'm just so tired of dissecting and looking at it and trying to figure it out and it's exhausting. But I am in a perfect place to be doing it and I'm here until I'm predicting till June so that gives me some more time to try to figure it out and not to figure it out to figure it out not I mean not to try to figure it out but to actually figure it out and yeah just keep going because I really do believe I'm supposed to help other people because I know the feelings of accomplishment with with this and getting over not not getting out like to say getting over but um getting through this. I refuse to believe I've been re-triggered because I have been re- I think here's the thing. I don't believe I've been re-triggered. I believe that this is a part of the whole trigger that I haven't dealt with yet. So that fear is coming up on a different level and a different layer of who I am that I am now having to, what feels like re-triggering, but it's more about just having to apply the same techniques and the same mindset to, to the other stuff that I did. I'm having to redo that process because this is a bigger, this is the original fucking level being by myself, feeling like there was no one around to help me feeling stranded, feeling lost, feeling like I was dying. Feeling like, yeah, like I was just terrified. And there's, there's a, there's a, there's a feeling of, um, I can't handle it. The emotions that come up. I can't handle the emotions. I can't handle, I can't handle, I can't deal with it. I can't handle it. I gotta go. And that is something I'm also learning in that book that I'm reading, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyways, because it talks about the, basically, if you can get to a place where you realize you can, you can handle it, you can handle anything because if you can, and this is, this is the space that I've, that I've been teaching and, and reteaching myself in this, for this part of my journey for this is that we are our own safe place. Like we we are our own safe place and I'm, my body still hasn't quite connected with that just yet. So again, I'm not been re-triggered. This is a different layer that I'm having to apply all this to that. Yeah. Just having to apply all this to the original layer, which is going to be the most intense. It's going to be the scariest. It's going to be the hardest thing, the hardest part of it. Because that last part hangs on. It's your ego too, right? Your ego will hang on to fucking anything, to, to, to trying to protect you, protect itself, protect you from having to feel that intense fucking pain. But the reality is I am going to have to go through that on some level. I don't think it's going to have to be as intense as I've done because I don't believe that it's meant to be that super intense. I just don't. So this is kind of the mind fuck of it. Again, I'm at that mind fuck place where you're, I'm having to keep myself in the moment and focused and keep my thoughts high vibrational. And, you know, I haven't been doing my meditation. That's the other thing I haven't been doing. My daily meditation is just, this place has just made me feel like I don't have a lot of structure. Um, in the last five days was the last first five days I've had by myself on this whole island since I moved here. And it was just not the time. I just, I needed to just relax and not have any structure in the sense of like other people's. I needed to just be myself and just relax. And that was great and awesome. And it worked and did what it needed to. But I think I need to get back into my daily meditation. Y'all are for confirmation. Thank you, source. And be working on my daily relaxation technique. I got basically just have to reapply the process all over again to this layer because it's the original one. So this is a long video. I mean, it's already on the road for X amount of freaking minutes. So, um, so 
So yeah. So again, it's like I, I go to try, I go to be like not compassionate with myself. I go to want to say all the things and I'm just not, I'm just, I'm refusing to go there. I'm just going to sit in gratitude for being in a supportive, loving place and environment where I can properly work through this. And I'm going to stay focused on moving forward, not going backwards. I'm going to stay focused on the progress I've made and not uh, the progress I so-called didn't make today. And I'm not going to let it detour me. I'm going to just keep moving forward. Even if it's slow, tiny fucking movements, I'm going to move forward and I'm going to be done with this. I am. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for your support. It means a lot to me.